Ladies and gentlemen, welcome here to the final day of final game of the day. I beg your pardon. This game here, a pool B clash, the Tux Invitational side locking horns with the oldies who are a KZN team. Uh, a massive clash here, and the Tux Invitational side, who are coached by Nardis Bardenhorst, the center forward for the OJ Eagles and South Africa, uh, g getting the first exclusion of this game. I believe that is number eight, uh, Kirk Wilson, who's been given his marching orders for the first time in this game. Caleb Cater feeding a ball, a high ball over to the left hand side, onto the hand of Aiden Braun, who rifles into the bottom left hand corner. And first blood to Tux Invitational here. This oldies or KZN inside going to be looking to create some goals through uh, one, two of the SA representatives here, Todd Howard and Dylan Crenier, both playing on the fetches in this clash. Dylan Crenier now on the ball, feeding down to the right-hand side, finding Aiden Truter. Truter feeding into centre, that ball there for Jordan Mailer. He's done beautifully well to get an exclusion there on number nine, Matt Collins. So a power play now straight up the other side for the oldies team. Dylan Crenier on the ball now, feeding out to Truter, back to Crenier. Truter again, into the hand of Kirk Wilson. Kirk Wilson on the hand on the be beautiful pass into the left-hand side. Mitch Slade catching that ball nice and high and making no mistake, repeating the uh, treatment that the Tux Invitational side gave them on the previous attack and bullets that into the bottom left-hand corner. And we are back to level pegging, one goal apiece. Great patience shown there by the oldie side on their man up. Tristan Chikmany getting us back underway, feeding back to the returning Matthew Collins. Ordinary foul there for Aiden Braun, slipping onto the right hand side with Nicholas Pierce. Slipping there to the left with Aiden Braun, pressurized by Crenier. Great perimeter pressure coming from Dil Crenier, stealing that ball away from Braun on the perimeter. And the oldie side coming now back up the other pool. Ooh. Coming back up the other side of the pool, I beg your pardon. Truta slipping the ball onto the left here for goal scorer Mitchell Slade. Or Mitch Slade, I beg your pardon. Mailer working very hard in the center, up against Matthew Collins. Round two for their battle, and Mailer's trying to slip one quickly into the top left-hand corner, but bouncing off the woodwork there, the goalkeeper Cameron Jones for the Tux Invitational side, untroubled by that attempt. Aiden Braun fetching the ball on the left-hand side. Now he's been pressed here quickly by Truta. Uh, protecting the ball there beautifully is Aiden Braun. Onto the left-hand side here now with Alexandra Kalbrick, who's trying to get some front water off Dil Is almost able to steal that ball away from him. Nick Pierce now on the ball, trying to get a pass over Truta, but Truta reads that, comes up nice and high on his legs and snatches that ball away from number 10, Aiden Braun. Straight up the other side of the pool, we have a counter-attack here. Todd Howard up against Matt Collins. Matt Collins doing too much to impede Todd Howard, one of the SA, center, uh, the SA center forward, and he receives a long pass up the pool and fires that over the head of the goalkeeper Cameron Jones. And for the first time in this game, the KZ inside have got a one goal lead. The scoreline now reading two goals to one. Tristan Chekmany getting us back underway. I believe that pronunciation is correct. When I asked Nardis Bardenos before the game, he did say it was Chekmany. I did check his knee and I said it was all right. He, did, he wasn't too happy with that. He said, I mustn't bring that up in commentary. I told him I would do it anyway. And here we are. Nick Pierce slipping that out onto the left-hand side now. Benjamin Kulbrick of uh, Melville, I beg your pardon. I think that he is this an Albans boy. Feeding that onto the left with Alexander Kulbrick, who's owned an ordinary foul there against opposite number six, Adrian Truter. Number one here, Gareth May, the Olympian, sent to the Sinbin for 20 seconds. So a power play here for the Tuck side, taken very quickly by Connor Peterson, who makes no mistake and bounces into the near side of the cage. Tucks returning themselves back to a level scoreline here. Crenier getting us back underway, feeding back to center back Kirk Wilson. Mitchell Slade feeding that back out to Truta on the right wing. Slade 
Wilson. He's come up massively high and fired that over the cage. Not able to keep that on target there is Kirk Wilson. And Cameron Jones, untroubled by that attempt, looking for a fetch up the pool. He has found Bradley Peterson, who represents in South Africa in the 2021 EU Nations Water Polo Tournament. Slipping to Nick Pierce here on the right, pressurized by Olympian Dylan Crenier. Melville on the ball here, pressurized by Truta, drawing an ordinary foul outside six. Chekmany working beautifully well in the center, trying to get off something for that. fantastic. That is outrageous. Beautiful work from um, Chekmany. He's got a look of absolute disbelief on his face. Retrieving that ball with his left hand, flicking it onto his right, going for a back shot a lob, and that has done nothing but bamboozle the goalkeeper, Gareth May. What a beautiful finish from Tristan Chekmany. And your knee looks like it's in perfect health, my good man. Beautiful finish. James Bentley on the ball. Slade. Bentley on the ball. Not pressurized here on the perimeter by Keita. Feeding to Dulcrenia. Pulling second on the left up against Nicholas Pierce. Who's done very well to just concede an ordinary foul. A scoop pass back into the center here. James Beamer bends and Bentley has had a shot from the perimeter. Referee Amu Matsukane has spotted uh, an impingement there coming from V number eight. I believe that is Connor Peterson, one of our goal scorers, for uh, sinking his player to the bottom of the pool. Too much trying to get a, a advantageous water there done by him. And we have a power play now for this case inside. A long pass from Krunia, finding over to Truta. Fed straight back onto the hand of Mitchell Slade, who first time catch and releases into the near bottom corner. Beautifully worked man up there from this KZ inside. The scoreboard now reading three goals apiece. I believe that may be 4-2, but I, I, I will let you guys know as that game progresses, they will correct the scoreboard if it is incorrect. Nicholas Pierce on the right here, pressurized by Crenia. Pierce looking for some options. Gareth May looking for some fetching options up the pool, finding number 11, Kelly Galdanes. The score is reading three goals apiece here. James Beamer bends and Bentley looking for a little lob pass there to Dulcrenia. Not the correct shape for him to use the, the exquisite legs that he has got, but Nicholas Pierce pressurizing phenomenally there on the left hand side to concede only an ordinary two. A quick pass there from Dulcrenia, but a massive crash coming in from number 11, Bradley Peterson, assisting out his colleague there, uh, Connor Peterson, and the possession recovered by the Tux Invitational side. A great start to this chucker by the Tux Invitational side. I believe the oldies came into this game as favorites. Um, none of the big competing sides in this pool have faced each other yet. Of course, the tridents amongst this group. Slipping that ball out here, Caleb Cater, the lefty, feeds that back onto Melville's hand. One big balk and he's fired that towards the near top corner, but has come off the woodwork and gone out, uh, out of bounds there. So Gareth May can get us back underway for the KZN side. May looking for some options up the pool. He's found Truta all the way up on the right hand, six meter. Truta has looked across the pool there to find Dulcrenia. Dulcrenia slipped that beautifully into Mela, and Mela has shown uh, number 10 there, Adrian Braun, the entire aquatic center, spun him silly, and a penalty there awarded or won by Mela in the center forward position for KZN. Dilkrenia stepping up here to take the penalty and regain the lead for this KZN outfit. Beautifully executed penalty there. Dilkrenia bouncing into the top right hand corner. Great finish from him. No chance for Cameron Jones in the cage. And the oldies side resume uh, or retake their lead. Now the scoreline reading four goals to three with 55 seconds left of this chucker.
Melville occupying the center forward position now. He's going to go and wrestle with James Bentley in the center. Matt Collins now on the ball. Foul drawn there against Jordan Mailer. Out to the left-hand side with Alex Kalbrick, who slipped that beautifully into Bradley Peterson, who's gotten away from his defender, Mitchell Slade. But his shot there onto the arm of Gareth May, who puts that out for a two-meter great save from the South African goalkeeper. Beautifully worked attack from this tuck side. Matthew Collins working down into two, but he's turned into traffic and somehow earned himself an ordinary foul there. 14 seconds left on the clock. They can have some. Uh, they can take some time here this tuck side before they let a shot go. Very loose pass there. Melville swimming back to retrieve it. Nick Pierce looks like he wants to go for a foul and shot, but they're up to try and give a nice ball on to the hand of Bradley Peterson. But beautifully read there from Mitchell Slade, able to intercept that ball before getting in to number 11, Bradley Peterson. Straight up the left-hand side, we've got Beamer, Benz, and Bentley on the ball now. Oh my days, an absolute perler coming in from Bentley. Uh, one big balk and rifling that cross cage. Not even a finger on that from Cameron Jones. Beautifully executed perimeter shot, just beating the clock with three seconds remaining on the clock. And just like that, for the first time this game, we have got a two goal deficit between these sides. Melville getting us back underway, feeding Kulbrick. Kulbrick's going to look for something special, but he's met a blocking arm right in front of him there through number 12, Jordan Mailer. And just like that, we come to an end of this first chucker in this clash between the oldies, also known as the side from KZN, and the Tux Invitational team. The scoreline reading five goals to three, and we'll see you again in the second chucker. Thank you again for joining us. We are back for the second chucker of the last game in the second day of the third annual Gauteng Invitational Water Polo Tournament. Thank you for joining us here. Of course, statistics, coverage and commentary brought to you by It's Happening Africa. My name in the, is Blaine Spitzelt in the commentary booth here. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to be taking us through this game today as best as I can. A quick start here to the second chucker. Matthew Collins has found himself in a shooting lane. Played that out to the left, but Kulbrick has somehow recovered that ball and tried to get some front water back. But fantastic defensive effort coming in from Kelly Galdanes, who stayed on his legs and kept playing when Kulbrick was waiting for some call from the referee. But nothing coming of that. And straight up the other side now, Todd Howard, the danger man for this, this case inside a spot in an open man driving down to three Ruan Basson has been crashed on there fantastic work Matthew Collins to slow that ball down foul call he's released the ball another wave coming through here Kirk Wilson slipping into a shooting lane over to Todd Howard now if he gets a foul and shot off it's almost guaranteed a goal so they want to try and slow him down as much as possible great defensive work coming from number two Ronan Monks Todd Howard has bulleted that into the top corner. Fantastic perimeter shot from him. Bouncing that just in front of the keeper, Cameron Jones, going into the roof of the cage. The KZ inside now leading this goal, this game, I beg your pardon, six goals to three. 
Rob Ambler here opting to put Bill Crenier and Todd Howard on the left-hand side, trying to overwhelm this Tux team on the single side of the pool. Culbrick getting us back underway here. A loose pass from Culbrick, quickly snatched away there from uh, the Tux side by Ruan Basson. He's waiting for his next wave. Todd Howard has got some front water on his defender, Ronan Monks. Mitchell Slade, one of our brace goal scorers here, has spotted Todd Howard on the left, fed him on the hand, one big balk, he's gone for a lob, and that is almost beautiful, oh it is beautiful, that has got its way over the line, a beautiful finish from Todd Howard, lobbing that over Cameron Jones, going onto the inside of the post, and just enough on that to cross the line, Cameron Jones beats him there on that attack, the scoreline now reading 7 goals to 3 in favour of the KZ inside, Todd Howard after a massive drive up the opposite side of the pool, calling for a substitution now, Dylan Pattel getting us back underway, playing to Marvels, over to Collins now, centre back turned, left fetch. A strong boy is Matthew Collins, gone up there against Mitchell Slade, trying to give a ball there to Nick Pierce. Dil Crenier showing us his cosy on that interception attempt, but not able to steal it. Nick Pierce drawing an ordinary foul, he loves a foul and shot here. He's come up nice and high, uh, Dil Crenier asking for a reversal on the book there. Matt Collins trying to connect the dots there with a high ball to his centre in Alex Kulbrick, but massive hands coming in the defensive effort from Kirk Wilson, able to put that out of bounds. So nothing materialising there for the, this tuck side on that previous attack. A great start to the second chucker from the KZ inside. They've snatched this lead away from Tux very quickly. Slipping back over here. Dol Crenier got acres of space here. They're going to want to close him down. But a contra foul in the center there. I believe that was against number three, uh, Ruan Basson. Uh, the referee on the far side there saying he used two hands, pulled his man underwater to gain advantageous water. So that is illegal and the possession is turned over. Alex Kulbrick gingerly making his way up the right-hand side of the pool here, looking for some options. Ben Melville trying to free himself up. He's been spotted. The dots have been connected. Matthew Collins working very hard in the center. Great pass into him, and he gets the better of Mitchell Slade, and he gets his first marching orders for this game. 20-second power play now for this tuck side. They want to draw themselves back within three goals of the KZN outfit. Ronan Monks, Nicholas Pierce, Dylan Patel, one big walk back to Pierce. Collins is open on the right, uh, Pierce is trying to do that on his own, not able to beat or get that into the frame there, uh, Gareth May untroubled by that attempt. Kazin and coming away unscathed, Truta storming up the right hand side of the pool, looking for Dil Crenier to free himself up, Truta is watching him all day long, slipping that ball into the centre, fantastic attacking effort there coming from Dil Crenier, a massive crash coming from Nicholas Pierce trying to assist Dylan Patel, Dil Crenier still able to get that shot off, going for a lob, but off target, coming off the inside of the woodwork, straight up the other side, uh, Matthew Collins has fetched that, fed that into Kulbrick who's trying to turn uh, Jordan Mailer inside out, but Mailer's got his legs about him, he's come up for a shot there on the perimeter, that shot wide of the cage, a bit rushed there from the Tux attack, they're going to want to slow that down, they did have extra men and now they've left themselves vulnerable on the transition now. Todd Howard on the shooting lane on the left-hand side. Gareth May has spotted Truta on the right-hand side. An easier pass, a higher percentage pass, if you will, and Truta slipping now into the center here. Over to the left-hand side. Mailer feeding over to Truta again. Todd Howard coming into the center water. And he's shot that towards the goalkeeper and a big perimeter block coming in from a number nine, Matthew Collins, who was wrestling with his opposite number nine, Dylan Crenier. Tucks coming away unscathed from that attack and Cameron Jones getting us back underway, feeding Ben Mulville, the St. Albans boy. Matthew Collins with a big drive up the center of the pool. He's covered by Truta. Nicholas Pierce not taking the open water, opting to slow it down a bit. Yeah, he's pressurized by number three, uh, Ruan Basson. Slipping into Matthew Collins, who's done phenomenally well. He's turned Truta inside out, but taking too long to get his shots off. An effective crash coming in from Todd Howard, helping out his compatriot there with Truta. And they steal the ball away from the uh, danger, dangerously positioned Matthew Collins. Six on six here, Truta against Kalbrick. Truta draws an ordinary foul, slipping to Crenier here, working against Melville, tries to get a quick back shot off, but only finds the crossbar of the cage. That ball going to the, the side of the pool uh, with a few seconds left on the shot clock, and Nicholas Pierce recovers possession now for Tux, feeding it straight up the other side of the pool from two to six. Matthew Collins now on the ball. We've got fantastic work. Tristan Chickmany working very hard against Jordan Mailer. Kalbrick now drawing an ordinary foul from Truta. Back out to Collins. Chekmany working very hard against Mailer. 
Mailer ducking under here to try and get advantageous water. Beautifully weighted pass there from Collins, connecting the dots with Chekmany. And Mailer sent to the Sinbin for 20 seconds. A power play here for this Tux side. Some physical greetings being exchanged there, I believe, between Chekmany and uh, Mailer. Matthew Collins has rifled one towards that top uh, left-hand corner. But Gareth May showing us why he wears the South African badge on his chest with lightning fast reflexes getting his hand into that top corner and putting that out for a two meter. But the tuck side with another roll of the dice here. The referee is calling us back here. You have to resume play from the two meter on the lane rope on that little beacon. Uh, the ball out to the right hand side. Ronan Monks feeding it into Melville. Two big box feeding out to Collins. He's pressurized aggressively on the perimeter. Chekmany now. Chekmany has fired that and uh, Gareth May has got his hands up in the way of that attempt and able to keep that ball in KZN position. Possession, I beg your pardon, feeding to Truter and consequently out to Kirk Wilson carrying up the right hand side of the pool. Kronier has got front water here on the right hand side. And number 12, Jordan Mailer calling for the ball. Todd Howard also here in a shooting lane. They're going to want to close him down very quickly. Here's Nick Pierce slipping that ball into Dill Kronier, who's worked phenomenally well. But Matthew Collins, massive crash coming from him, able to prevent Jordan. Um, oh, sorry, I lost my tongue there. Dill Kronier from having a free shot there on two meters. Fantastic defensive effort from Tux. The scoreline still reading seven goals to three. Caleb Cater back in the water here for this tuck side. Ben Melville, big balk from him. Tristan Chekmany driving into the center, turns to positive water and wins himself a penalty. Beautiful work from him, great vision from Melville to spot the open man and a perfect pass into the stroke of Chekmany. And he is impeded from behind there. I believe that is number eight, Kirk Wilson, who's uh, conceded that penalty. That is his second major of the game. Uh, this KZ inside, uh, a very uh, one of the smaller squads entering into this tournament. So if they do lose a player, the missing pre the presence will be felt. Ben Melville here, going up against Olympian Gareth May in the cage. Absolutely massive from Ben Melville. Comes up nice and high to his cosy. A beautiful photo finish into the bottom right-hand corner that will live in his head forever, scoring against a very strong goalkeeper in Gareth May. Referee Amu Matukane now uh, asking the coach for the tuck side, Nardis Badenost, to quieten down a little bit. That I believe will be his only warning. Following that will be a yellow card, and then after that, a red the tuck side within three here of this case that inside a very tightly contested affair so far in this pool b clash both of these sides going up against the trident side tomorrow which will decide the the placement of pool b of course in pool a the Gauteng under 19s and the oj eagles still competing for top spot they go against each other tomorrow kelly Galdenes has absolutely ripped one into the top left hand corner beautiful perimeter shooting from him and he opens his account in this clash and the kz inside ret restore their four goal lead tristan chickmany getting us back underway Feeding that back to Adrian Aiden Butler. Aiden Braun. Back out to Butler. Checkmany working very hard in the center here. Ball moved to the right hand side with Connor Peterson. Feeding out to Kato, who's pressurized by Dil Kronier. Too much pressure from him. Checkmany is fed in the center. He has done phenomenally well, but Gareth May closing the angle beautifully saves that shot with nothing short of his nose. Beautiful goalkeeping effort from him. A long pass up to Todd Howard's, a short pass, a fantastic crash. Caleb Cater able to recover possession for his side, preventing Todd Howard from getting a shot off there on five meter. Todd Howard in a little bit of disbelief there from that. Aiden Butler recovering the ball. No time left on the clock there. I think that was going to be Connor Peterson ripping a back shot from the halfway, but that draws a close to our first half here. The KZ inside, led by Rob Ambler, leading this Tux Invitational side. Eight goals to four. Of course, the Tux side led by Nardis Baranos. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you again in the third chakra.
And welcome back to the this clash. I beg your pardon. The third chucker here between the KZN side, the oldies up against the Tux Invitational side. The oldies currently with an advantage in this game, leading eight goals to four. But the Tux side not taking it, lying down, and absolutely giving it to this KZN outfit. We've got Todd Howard now playing the position he plays for South Africa in centre forward. They've slipped that ball into him. He's got the turn off of Bradley Peterson and immediately penalty earned for this KZ inside. Great centre forward presence is Todd Howard. It looks like James Beamer, Benz and Bentley is going to step up, but no, sir. Todd Howard pulls rank and says, no, I'm taking this. He's already completed his hat-trick this game, so let's see if he can add to his score tally. Great, great taken penalty there from Todd Howard firing into the bottom left-hand corner. Nothing goalkeeper Cameron Jones can do to keep that out. And the KZN side extend their lead to five goals here. Dylan Pattle getting us underway, playing in centre forward. We've got Bradley Peterson at centre back, slipping it out to the left to find Aiden Braun. That pass out to the right now. Caleb Cater, the lefty. Bradley Peterson recovering that ball. Nicholas Pierce trying to slip into a shooting lane here. We've got a contra foul on the perimeter there. I believe that is against number 10. Uh, Aiden Braun doing too much to try and gain advantageous water against Mitchell Slade. And a massive counter-attack coming from this KZ inside. Todd Howard here on the ball. Kelly Geldenace in support on the right. Todd Howard looks like he's going to do this on his own. And a massive save coming from Cameron Jones. Coming up huge for his side to keep them in contention of this fixture. Todd Howard, perhaps they should have moved the ball around. They were extra man here, the KZ inside. They do want to convert those uh, into guaranteed goals by pulling the defense apart and passing it into the cage. Cater feeding out to Peterson here, pressurized by Howard. A loose pass from Peterson, a lazy pass, but possession still recovered nonetheless by Aiden Braun, who's pressurized by Mitchell Slade. Ordinary foul inside six. And that will be the end of the 30 seconds here for the Tux Invitational side, dumping that ball into the corner so they can cover, come back and cover the counter-attack from this KZN outfit. Gareth May rifling that ball up the left-hand side to find Jordan Mailer. Mailer on to the right to find Mitch Slade. Out to Krenier. Slade driving down onto two. Geldenace balancing on the left, slipping to Mela on the right. Oh my days, textbook water polo coming from this KZ inside. That ball from Geldenace into the second hole with Jordan Mela, who gets a quick release back shot into the top right-hand corner. Cameron Jones unaware that shot was coming so fast. Beautiful attack from the KZ in all these. The scoreline now reading 10 goals to four. Tristan Chekmini. Back in the center forward for this tuck side. He's done very well so far in center. The KZ inside look like they're still implementing a tight press. Nick Pierce trying to free up a shooting lane here. That ball out to the right wing now with Connor Peterson. Trying to draw an ordinary foul here. And he's fumbled that ball and Dill Crenier has come away with possession. And Todd Howard's got three meters on Bradley Peterson. Crenier has spotted him. He's waiting for him to free himself out, but Peterson has made up the ground and the, that counter attack has withered away. Matthew Collins here in the support. The ball up to Kelly Geldenace. Nicholas Pierce helping back on defense. A big drop coming in on Todd Howard in the center. Caleb Cater out to Jordan Mailer. Mitch Slade. Geldenace has met a massive block coming from Matthew Collins. And he's transitioned hard there against Kelly Geldenace and the tuck side coming away unscathed. A big counter-attack opportunity for them now. Matthew Collins on the ball, drawing Mailer over. He's going to pop that out to Cater, the lefty on the right side. Collins is going to want to keep going. He's got two meters on Geldenace here. They've opted to play that to front water for Chekmini. And the player, James Bentley, phenomenally positioned with his body, able to recover that pass. Chekmini unable to hold that. A long pass up the pool to try and find Todd Howard. And he gets the 50-50 ball off of Peterson and makes no mistake and rifles into the top left-hand corner. That is the fifth goal of the game for Todd Howard. An absolute goal-scoring presence for this uh, oldies side. Dil Krenier talking to his, his Warriors. They're saying, I do not care what happens up on attack. Just make sure you come back and defend. Uh, Dil Krenier, obviously by trade, is a center back. So a center back mentality being passed along to his teammates. 
Kulbrick. Connor Peterson. Try to get a sneaky turn off against Howard. He does recover the ball. Collins on the ball now. Peterson trying to go for a drive, not committing to it. But now he's in the shooting lane here. And Peterson has rifled one, but Gareth May up to the task, getting a huge hand on that, putting it out to the perimeter. Ben Melville recovering possession. And Dolt Crenier doing too much to try and steal that ball off of Kalbrick. Peterson is trying to slip into Chekmany, who's done beautifully. And he's slipped a back shot there under the arm of Gareth May. But that comes off the inside of the post, unable to keep that on target. Gareth May with a smile on his face, as per usual. Nicholas Pierce trying to pressurize him, but a beautiful long pass up to Jordan Mailer. And a man left open here on the right-hand side. But beautiful defensive effort from Matthew Collins to uh, squander that attack from this oldie side. Todd Howard there was on the ball. He was assisted, though, it was um, Collins by his teammate Kulbrick. Very fortunate that ball went into center there. Calden Hayes was open on the right-hand side. Pierce drawing an ordinary foul. Chekmany trying to steal some front water here from Bentley. Nick Pierce looks like he may have a go here. Beautiful attempt coming on the perimeter from Nick Pierce. Coming up nice and high, wrapping around Mitchell Slade and bouncing into the top, into the into the left corner post and in a beautiful finish. Nothing Olympian Gareth May can do on that attempt. Tuck side clawing themselves back to within six goals here. <clears throat> Mixing it up here, the KZ inside. Todd Howard now in center uh, with Mela and Crenier on the left. When they started, Howard was on the perimeter and Mela was sitting center. So a little diversity being shown here by this Aldi's team. Truta on the ball now. Uh, looking for a high ball to Howard, but a massive hand coming up from Cameron Jones in the cage there. Todd Howard asking for something from the referees, but nothing coming of it. And the tuck side come away unscathed. Collins feeding the ball up to Melville on the right-hand side. Occupying the space given to him by Crenier. Peterson now drawing, trying to draw a foul here from Truta. Chekmany working very hard in the centre. They're going to want to try and feed him here. Nick Pierce. Oh, we got a contra foul here. I believe that is against Nicholas Pierce for doing too much uh, to try and get advantageous water there against Mitchell Slade. And a big counter attack coming from this KZ inside. You've got Mitchell Slade storming up the right with Truta. A little confusion from them. I don't know if they each knew they were there. Both in the same place, and they squander that counter attack uh, cross pool pressure from Connor Peterson. Much too aggressive foul coming from Peterson, so he's sent to the Sinbin and a power play now for this KZ inside. A little bit of ill discipline coming from Peterson, no need for that. He could have just taken an ordinary foul and then they would be extra man on D. Great leg test there coming in from Alex Kulbrick, almost intercepting that ball from Crenier, but Crenier returning the favor, coming up nice and high and rifling cross cage, beating Cameron Jones in the tux cage. The scoreline now reading 12 goals to five in favor of the KZ inside. Looks like the fitness of the oldie side coming into play here. A few counter-attacks coming from them, but Tucks are recovering well, crashing and cross-cover def cross defensing beautifully to squander some of these, uh, but some discipline issues coming in for the Tux boys so far. Quite a few contra-files going up on their attacks too. They're going to want to polish that up. Collins on the ball now, pressurized by Mela. Pierce trying to slip into a shooting lane on the left here. He's pressurized by Truta, trying to feed onto the second center there. Oh my days! What a perler coming from number 10, Aiden Braun, getting the advantageous water from Kelly Galdanes. A pass from Nicholas Pierce. He takes his time, grips that ball, and rips that ball into the cross cage top corner, beating Gareth May in the cage. What a beautiful finish coming in from Aiden Braun. A spectacular way to open your account in this clash. Back underway, Kirk Wilson, one of the players for this KZ inside with two majors to his name. He's going to want to be careful if he wants to see the final whistle. Wilson out to Galdanes. A big drop coming in from this tuck side. Truta out here to Wilson. Wilson has fired one from distance, but Cameron Jones up to the task and puts that out for two meters. Great goalkeeping awareness from him. A good shot on the perimeter coming from Kirk Wilson. Mela getting us back underway here. A little L drive coming from Truta to free up Galdanes on the right. He is spotted. They have fed him. They are not wanting to give Todd Howard any space here. And he is reversed. Todd Howard now for holding his defender. 
He received a little bit of a gentle push off with the foot there. It may have been a little more than gentle from Tristan Checkmany. Todd Howard returning, saying, uh, come boy, let's have a go. Uh, so hopefully they're going to keep it legal in this clash. But of course, water polo is a very physical contest. Tristan Checkmany reversed immediately up the other side of the pool, swimming over Adrian Truter to try and get his front water. If this ball goes up the pool, the oldie side will be man up. Dil Crenier on the ball, Todd Howard taking center water, opting to play Truta on the right. Cover defense coming across here. Great work coming from Tux to close that attack. Aiden Braun closing the ball. Fortunately, they have to retake that play. Oh, wait, no, I beg your pardon. Amu Matukane calling the ball back. Oh, they are retaking the play. Very fortunate for this oldie side uh, that was intercepted on its way to... Uh, whoa! Massive shot coming in the perimeter there from Dil Krenia and a massive block coming in from Nicholas Pierce. We have got eight seconds left on the clock here. A loose pass from um, Krenia is fetched by Nick Pierce. Three seconds left on the clock. He's whipped one from downtown. And that was a beautiful attempt from so far, coming off the top side of the post, almost beating Gareth May there. But that draws an end to the, to the third chucker. The KZN Aldis leading this game 12 goals to six. We'll see you again in the final chucker. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the final chucker of day two here in the third annual Gauteng Invitational Water Polo Tournament. This clash here, a Pool B fixture, the KZN Oldies going up against the Tux Invitational side. The KZN Oldies currently leading this game 12 goals to six with a fantastic shooting display coming in from Todd Howard. As we've always come to expect, five goals to his name so far. But this Tux side not taking it lying down, responding beautifully so far in this game. Uh, still a tightly contested game here and off the ball exclusion here Connor Peterson getting his marching orders so that's his second major of the game uh, doing too much there to impede Todd Howard a power play now for the KZ inside the ball on the right now with Mitch Slade feeding a cross pool ball to Myler who's tried to slip that into the second post with Kelly Geldenes and an interception there made by the um, tuck side and the referees they're deeming that an intentional tap out so they push that ball out intentionally so that is considered a two meter looking for a high ball pass there was Todd Howard Mitch Slade trying to connect the dots with him but that pass a bit too low for Todd Howard and he tries to get a slap finish off there but that goes wide of the cage Dylan Pattle now got some half front water storming into the open water the tuck side up onto the right Referee Amu Matukane has spotted something here on the transition. He's calling for the ball. Let's see what he has to say. Number eight, rolled. Connor Peterson, I believe that is. It looks like Connor Peterson was on three majors. So he re-entered the pool, and that means penalty for the KZN side. He had got his three majors. 
got back into the pool. So table did indicate that the white cap showed the white flag with the red flag, which means you've had your three majors. You are no longer allowed to participate in this game. And he re-entered. So a penalty immediately earned for the KZN side. It looks like James Bentley, who scored an absolute screamer earlier in this game, is up to bat. Beautifully taken penalty from him firing past Cameron Jones into the right side of the net. It looks like Bradley Peterson has taken the water for Connor Peterson. Uh, two of the Peterson boys, I'm not sure if there is a relation there, uh, but I will find out for you. And if I commentate again, I will be sure to bring that up. Aiden Butler now in the center forward position for us. Peterson occupying center back, getting us back underway here. Slipping to number 14 there, Riley Lamprecht. I think this is the first we've seen on him, seen of him this game. Nicholas Pierce has found himself in some space and he's fired that there into the close corner. But replacement goalkeeper there, Nathan Jacobs, able to deflect that onto the post. And Todd Howard immediately up the other side of the pool here. If he completes this attempt, he will com have completed a double hat-trick in this fixture. Time and space for him and too much power on that finish. Blasting past Cameron Jones in the cage and Todd Howard completes his double hat trick. Six goals for him in this clash. His scoreline now reading 14 goals to six. Bradley Peterson on the ball now. That ball out to Lamprecht. A little bit of tech is coming in there from uh, Todd Howard, almost able to intercept that ball with his foot, but he, he passed that back to Lamprecht. Nick Pierce slipping into centre. Dil Krenier earning, drawing an ordinary foul there against Ronan Monks. Nick Pierce trying to slip into a shooting lane again here. Comes up nice and high and fires, but Dil Krenier says, don't worry, Jacobs, I got you. Gets the block off before that shot gets to the cage. Fantastic for the goalkeeper to be able to block, uh, trust his blockers. Nick Pierce, high intensity cover defense. They're coming back to help Todd Howard, to help Bradley Peterson with Todd Howard. Mitch Slade with a brace so far this game, slipping out to Dil Krenier, who's also got a brace to his name. They're giving him a lot of space here. This man can shoot from distance. It looks like he's gonna, but he's fired towards that top left-hand corner, and he's only met the two outstretched hands of Cameron Jones in the cage, who puts that out for a two-meter. Kelly Geldenes gets us back underway. Uh, looks like Dil is going to fire again, but he's given a sneaky pass into centre there with Bentley, and Bentley completes his hat-trick with a gentle back shot under the arms of Cameron Jones, and the KZ inside running away with it here on the fourth chakra. The scoreline now reading 14 goals to six. Thank you so much for joining us here at the third annual Gauteng Invitational Water Polo Tournament. Uh, if you guys want to pull in and come and catch some polo and maybe a few cold ones with the boys or the girls, some of your old polo mates from school or from last season, if you're taking a break from the game, there are cold beers and gin on tap here at St. David's Marist in Anda. Please join us. There's fantastic food for sale, fantastic polo on display and the coldest of beverages up for grabs. We've got an off-the-ball exclusion there. I believe the naughty boy there. No, it's not off-the-ball exclusion, I beg your pardon. Uh, that was Mitchell Slade sent to the naughty corner there, spotted by referee Amu Matsukane. And the coach here, Nardis Badenost, for the Sucks Invitational side, calling for a timeout. His players coming in now to hear some, um, some words of wisdom from the coach himself, Nardis Badenost, trying to hype up his charges to get some goals in this next attack. Nardis telling his charges where they're going to set up on this man up. It seems like they're going to try a set move here.
Nardis breaking from that team talk saying, let's see, let's see. So perhaps something a little miraculous. He's still got a smoke on his face. So maybe something fancy out of the drawing book or off the drawing board coming up here. Let's see what they can piece together on this power play. Cameron Jones getting us back underway, feeding it to Kulbrick. Out to the left-hand side with Peterson. Kulbrick again. Two big box over to Collins. Keita on the ball, back to Collins. Chekmany is trying to slip into a shooting lane here. A high ball to Chekmany, and he's rifled that into the cross cage. But there is a Nathan Jacobs able to make a massive save there. But Jacobs, while trying to earn an ordinary foul against Bradley Peterson, has put that out of bounds. So a two-meter here for this Tux side. Nicholas Pierce working very hard, trying to slip that into Tristan Chekmany, and he's got the better of Dilkrenier on this case. And Dilkrenier gets his first major of the game, and another power play here for the Tux side. Uh, we've had another red card here, I believe. That is Dil Krenier, who was red carded there. I'm not sure if he shared some words with the referee, um, but he has to get out and leave the pool area. No further part shall be taken in this game by Dil Krenier. Matthew Collins, the opposite number nine, has absolutely bulleted that into the top right-hand corner. Crossbar down, fantastic perimeter shooting from him. That shot took all his energy, calling for an immediate substitution for, from his coach. That was Dil Krenier who got that red card. Uh, so a little update for you there. A red card is a game suspension. So I believe Dil Krenier will not be taking part in the next game for this KZ inside. A massive loss for them. Uh, coming up nice and high to shoot there is Kirk Wilson. But he's rifled towards the near corner. And he's met the arms of Cameron Jones occupying that space. So no goal for them. Uh, perimeter pressure coming from Truta here. A quick pass up to Kulbrick who's very aware on his legs. Fed over to Nicholas Pierce. The perimeter shooter. He's gone for a little box kick uh, up and under there. But it's come off the inside of the post. Nathan Jay. Jacob's not penalized there for sneaking up off his line, but straight up the other side, Truta on the ball now. We're a bit of a man-on-man -man situation here. Uh, Nicholas Pierce firing the afterburners coming down to cover, but fantastic steal coming from Aiden Braun in the Tux number 10 cap. A really strong effort coming in from this Tux side in this game. They really took this oldie side head on. A long pass up the other side of the pool has found uh, Alex Kulbrick who slipped into Nicholas Pierce. Nicholas Pierce given time and space and fires beautifully into the cross cage, bouncing under the arms of Nathan Jacobs and that ball giving us nothing but the sound of the net as it rests itself in the top bins. I'm sure we had a beautiful camera angle for you guys there on that shot. Uh, Nick Pierce, they're going to be able to add that one to the highlight reel. Beautiful finishing from him. That I believe is Nicholas Pierce's second goal of the game. Fantastic perimeter shot. Number three, Ruan Bosson in the oldies caps getting us underway. He's occupying the center forward position now. He's going to go and wrestle up against Alex Kulbrick in center. Number eight, Kirk Wilson on the ball. Melo working very hard into second center. Todd Howard on the perimeter, pressurized by Melville, doing everything he can to slow him down. Uh, Howard still able to get that shot off, fires into the top corner, uh, but that ball captured by Cameron Jones. It looks like Todd Howard there now going to be excluded here. A transition exclusion earned by Benjamin Melville and another timeout called by coach Nardis Badenhorst. Perhaps another roll of the dice, another bite at the cherry for this tuck side to pull off something phenomenal. So that clash that Dylan Crenier will not be taking part in is against the Rams Sporting Academy, uh, the B team. So not the biggest miss for him in a, or the oldie side in that call. Uh, the big game tomorrow for this KZN side will be locking horns with the Trident's men. Those two sides, I believe, are the favorites to top pool B.
Cameron Jones getting us back underway. Culbrick on the ball now. Culbrick feeding it out to the right-hand side. Back to Culbrick. Out to the right wing again. So I've just lost my team sheet, so I would have the names. I know Culbrick's name by, by memory. Culbrick steals the ball back again. Number 10 has fired for a donut, but Krispy Kreme is closed at this hour. Nathan Jacobs saying, no, sir, not today. Not over my head on that attempt and puts that out for a two meter. Aiden Braun with that attempt at the donut. And Aiden Butler was the provider on the right hand side. Culbrick fetching the ball out to Butler on the right hand side. To Braun with a first time catch and release finish, beating the blocker number four, Mitchell Slade, and Nathan Jacobs on that immediate catch and release finish into the bottom left hand corner. Fantastic shooting from him there. The scoreline now reading 14 goals to nine. Uh, five goal deficit here with one minute and 30 seconds left on the clock. The result is secured in favor of the oldies. Um, it's just a matter of pride now if Tux can pull some more goals back here. Adrian Truta on the ball. Kirk Wilson. Culbrick wrestling hard in the center there up against number four Mitchell Slade. Truta on the ball. Perimeter pressure coming in from Aiden Butler. Ordinary foul. Truta slipping out to Galdanez, trying to do a little uh, roll there on the right-hand side. And number three, Aiden Butler, doing too much to prevent Truta taking that water. So he's sent to the Sinbin and power play here for the Aldi side. And the coach, Rob Ambler, of the Aldi side, calling a timeout. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to thank you again so much for joining us here on the coverage for the third annual Gauteng Invitational Water Polo Tournament. Um, this tournament, of course, one of the two men's Premier League tournaments uh, hosted throughout the year, the other being the Cape Town Invitational, hosted at the beginning of the summer season, and the Gauteng Invitational, hosted at the end of the summer season. This is the third annual iteration of this tournament in an attempt to bring back the men's level long course water polo, which has been uh, struggling since uh, COVID, but the polo really picking up some momentum again. Of course, uh, some of the sides not pulling through for this tournament, the Cape, the Cape sides in particular. Uh, I believe that is a, a bit of a drop in motivation coming from some of those sides due to S South African uh, Sascock, I believe it is, uh, pulling SA or Swim SA, pulling us out of the Olympic contention. Todd Howard now on the ball, pressurized by Tristan Chekmini. Trying to slip that ball into second center, but Ben Melville read that beautifully against his opposite 12, Jordan Mailer, and steals that ball. And Mailer gets his marching orders sent to the naughty corner for impeding a counter attack. Ben Melville now storming up the right hand side of the pool. Nardis Bardenos calling for some cover defense there. Aiden Braun to stay back. He wants his team to play a five on four. They should set up here in a three on two setup. Three players down on two and two on the top. Ben Marvel given acres of space here. Two big box and a shot clean over the head of Nathan Jacobs. Crispy Cream is open at these hours. What a beautiful finish coming in from the young man from St. Albans. Nardis Bardenost, of course, also the first team coach for St. Albans, so he'll be happy to see one of his youngsters playing phenomenally well in this Tux side. I have just noticed that the Tux side are wearing St. Albans helmets, or caps, if you will. Truta giving that back here to Kirk Wilson. Todd Howard trying to slip into a shooting lane there. That ball not fed to him by Kirk Wilson. Kirk Wilson rifles one from the perimeter and makes no mistake, bouncing to the top right-hand corner, beating Cameron Jones in the cage. And the KZ inside regain their six-goal lead with three seconds left on the clock. We're going to have a long-range shot here. I'm not sure who Tucks are going to pick to fire from distance. Going to need to be something special to beat Nathan Jacobs from this range. 
Looks like Aiden Braun has gone and whipped one, but that has gone over the cage and that draws an end to this game. And so that's all she wrote. The scoreline ending at 16 goals to 10 in favor of the KZ and Oldies outclassing the, the Tux Invitational side. Thank you so much for joining us here at day two of the third annual Gauteng Invitational Water Polo Tournament. Please take care and join us for some live action tomorrow on Good Friday. So until next time, my name is Blaine Spadolt and we'll see you again tomorrow.